So this is a lesson on op-ed and um, what is it and how will you recognize it. So just to review, the op-ed got its name for being opposite the editorial page in a print newspaper. But that doesn't help us very much when we are reviewing news online. So we are going to look at some of the distinctions between four kinds of reporting. One is news reporting, so factual news reporting written in the third person, includes multiple points of view, frequently features quotes from interviewees. Editorial is unsigned. It's written by the editorial board. It represents the newspaper itself, not an individual. A letter to the editor is sent in from the public. It's selected by the editorial board and it's limited in size and number because it's featured in the print publication. And an op-ed is signed. It's authored by a columnist. Authors generally have expertise or specialization. It appears on a schedule. It's limited in size and it doesn't necessarily reflect the opinion of the publication in which it appears. So here's um, a screen from the Wall Street Journal and I'm going to ask you if this article is news reporting, editorial, letter to the editor, or op-ed. And we're going to do that for the next couple of screens. So I want you to just look at the headline and see if you can figure that out. How about this one? How about that one? How about that one? This one? How about that? And that? Well, that was a trick question. Um, it is the opinion section of the Wall Street Journal. So how can you tell it's op-ed? First, read. Um, but there are some things you can look for. One is references to recent stories in the publication. Two is it would be interjected with personal history on the subject, would identify a problem. It would be written in the first person in a lot of cases, but not always. They rely on sort of um, catchy phrases that you've heard before, cliches. Generally an opinion is something to look for in an op-ed piece. It will like use some clever mechanics in terms of writing style that will not you will not see in straight up re reporting um, watch out for superlatives always never or absolutes it does this it has this um, generally reporting will try to skirt around absolutes so it may have or it could might imply right a call to action here's something you should do and you'll find a lot of emphasis where they're actually describing things with adverbs and adjectives. So there's some clues in this article that are pretty helpful. Um, first, it's in the first person. I thought of a study yesterday. Virtual shoe-in is a kind of idiom that we talk about. Saying something is outrageous is the kind of description, the adjective we're talking about. Um, he's pointing to a problem. So like, here, this is a problem. He's defining it as ridiculous. All right. Musicians deserve credit for their accomplishments. So this is something, it's basically a call to action. Athletes do. Very short sentence, very abrupt. That's, a, that's sort of a startling sentence right there. Starting a sentence with the word and is unorthodox. I'm a sports fan. That contraction instead of I am. Here's a reference to an article in the publication itself that came out within the last couple of days. So you can see that article actually hits on all but one of these uh, criteria to recognize an op-ed piece.